On this episode of OC Unsolved, we cover the murder of Nancy Cooper, a case in which, for a first on the show, someone has been charged. But, that said, though there might be a likely suspect, he also may be innocent. And, before I start, happy two years of OC Unsolved. I never thought I'd still be making this series two years later. I know the pilot came out in April, but still, I count this, which is also the Estonia anniversary, as the birth of OC Unsolved. So, thank you so much. Also, I am making a video a little bit later, answering many questions about the show in both seasons 1 and 2, so ask away in the comments at any questions you have over the 20, well, 19 at this point, mysteries we've covered on the show. Thank you so much. Anyways, let's get into it. Brett and Nancy Cooper were from Canada and met while working for IBM in Alberta. Nancy always looked for successful men who had lots of money, were outgoing, and popular. However, after her last relationship ended in failure, she was looking for someone who was more laid back. That was Brad. Brad wasn't usually Nancy's type, but they got along just fine. She told her sister Brad was a lot safer, kinder, and got along with her well. In October 2000, they got married, and soon after, Brad got a job at Cisco in the USA. They moved to Cary, North Carolina, a place that they thought was very safe. However, cracks in their relationship were already showing. In 2002, Nancy visited her family back in Alberta and told them that she was not happy with her life in North Carolina. One of her issues was that, as a Canadian citizen, she couldn't work without a work visa, and, due to her not having social security, she couldn't be sent money back from her family. She told them that she wasn't going back, but Brad came to Canada and begged her to come back. They returned and things remained pretty stable for quite a while. In 2004 and 2006, they had children. She also found work as a nanny, and things seemed okay. Things went fine until 2008, when Nancy discovered a horrifying truth that all her problems were occurring because of Brad. She discovered Brad was intentionally holding her back from earning money to keep her dependent on him. He also cut her name off of their credit cards and removed her name from their bank accounts. This explanation was that she was spending too much money and wanted her to be financially stable, but Nancy didn't think so. She also discovered that Brad had had multiple affairs with several women, one of whom was Nancy's best friend. That's when she decided that enough was enough and that she was going to divorce Brad and move back to Canada. However, being basically jobless for eight years made it financially unfeasible to move back to Canada. Nancy's lawyer told her to stay in a separate room and lock the door for safety. Brad became more controlling and things began to quickly break down. This is where things reached the point of no return. Brad hacked into Nancy's email to see her emails, eavesdropped on her phone, and hid the children's passports so they couldn't leave. Brad also filled up her car with just enough gas to get around the city, but not enough to leave. On July 11, 2008, they attended a party with a neighbor, but ended up fighting the entire time. That night, however, something horrific would happen, the details of which are still unknown. The next day, Nancy's friend was waiting for her to attend a meeting, but she did not attend. After two hours, they called home. It was Brad, who had answered that he had heard her from his room in the night, and that early in the morning, Nancy had told him that she was going jogging, but had never came back. Everywhere they searched, and the entire town was basically taking part in the search effort, Law enforcement was in full swing, and the news was covering the story. Nancy's family also flew down from the U.S. to speak to the press. Suspiciously, Brad was not at the conference. Two days later, the case would finally be closed, sort of, when a man was out for a stroll when he noticed something. There was a body floating face down in the water. It was Nancy, and she was dead. And with that, let's get into the theories, of which there are only two worth discussing. The first theory is that Brad killed her. To explain this, we must continue the story as it went on. After Nancy was found, Brad was arrested, and they got a search warrant. Two months passed, and no evidence was found. However, 
After three months, evidence was finally found, although the public wasn't told what that evidence was yet. Brad was finally put on trial, and during this, the extramarital affairs and controlling behavior were brought to light. But, more disturbingly, was the smoking gun of the case. A map found on Brad's computer was zoomed in to the exact place Nancy's body was found. Brad argued he had never been to that place and that he didn't know anything about it, but his browser history showed that he did a search of the area the day before her death. However, defense attorneys were saying that you cannot explain that away. This is 12 hours before his wife is murdered and he's zooming in on where his wife's body was eventually found. Prosecutors say that they returned home and put the girls to sleep. Then they theorize after that he killed Nancy and drove her body to the pond. There, the defense brought up several interesting points of which we will touch on next. But eventually, the jury unanimously agreed that Brad was guilty and convicted him of first degree murder. The second theory is that Brad did not do it. Let's continue the story. In 2013, Brad was released and a retrial was held. During this, Brad's lawyers stated that the maps were planted by investigators to frame Brad, saying that an IT expert wouldn't leave incriminating evidence on his computer, also saying that Brad took out multiple loans to compensate for his wife's overspending, and that his controlling measures were necessary. Another interesting revelation was that Nancy herself had cheated on Brad, and that the, their daughter was born eight months after that affair. Their final point was that the police were so rushed to accuse Brad, they left out evidence that did not suit them. Basically, this theory is saying that police corruption caused the conviction. But this story takes another turn, because even with all the evidence pointing to him being innocent, Brad pleaded guilty on September 28th, which is the day this video is being uploaded. He was sentenced to 12 years and relinquished the rights to his daughters so that they could be adopted by Nancy's twin sister. Brad was released and deported to Canada in 2020. Despite him pleading guilty, many believe Brad was innocent till this day. There's even an entire website dedicated to proving him wrong. I looked at it, and while they have some good points, this site stinks of bias, and I don't know what this guy's relation to Brad is, but it's a strange site to be fair. And with that, that is two years of OCN Solved, and also episode 9. Next episode will be the conclusion to season 2, and remember, ask me in the comments any questions you have about any of the 20 cases we've covered so far, and I'll cover them later. With a missing murder, a man pleading guilty, and an infamous Google Maps search, the mystery of Nancy Cooper's murder will remain unsolved.